നമസ്കാരം ദിസ് ഡിസ്കഷൻ ഇസ് ഓൺ എ കോൺട്രവേഴ്സിയൽ മിസ് ഇൻറ്റർപ്രിറ്റഡ് പോർഷൻ ഫ്രം ദി മനുസ്മൃതി ന സ്ത്രീ സ്വാതന്ത്ര്യമർഹതി പ്രോബബ്ലി ദിസ് മിസ് അണ്ടർസ്റ്റാൻഡിങ് ഈസ് ഡ്യൂ ടു ദി ഇൻഫ്ലുവൻസ് ഓഫ് കൊളോക്കിയൽ സ്പീച്ച് ആൻഡ് ദ ലോക്കൽ മീനിങ് ഓഫ് ദ വേൾഡ് സ്വാതന്ത്ര്യം വിച്ച് ഓഫ് കോഴ്സ് ഈസ് ഫ്രീഡം ഇൻ ഫാക്ട് ദിസ് വേൾഡ് ടോക്സ് അബൌട്ട് വിമൻ സേഫ്റ്റി ആൻഡ് ഹാസ് നത്തിങ് ടു ഡു വിത്ത് ദിയർ ഫ്രീഡം നൗ ദ വേൾഡ്സ് ഇൻ ക്വസ്റ്റ്യൻ ഈസ് പിതാരക്ഷതി കൗമാരെ ഭർത്താരക്ഷതി യൗവനെ രക്ഷന്തി സ്ഥാതിരേ പുത്രാ ന സ്ത്രീ സ്വാതന്ത്ര്യം അർഹതി so these misinterpretations have cut apart only the tail end of the world nastri swatantriya marhati and imposed an invented meaning women do not deserve freedom this misinterpretation made without understanding the semantic structure of the sanskrit language without considering the subject matter and also the context has done calamitous damage to the image of a noble text and to the depiction of women who did it it is so unfortunate that this misinterpretation has been in circulation for years and remains largely misconstrued even today so let us try to set right this presumptuous textual misinterpretation before going into the subject i would like to make it clear that my intention is neither to propagate or to make a blanket endorsement of all that the manusmriti says now to keep under wraps the tenets of manusmriti rather i would strictly confine myself within the boundaries of a pure academic exercise in fact the condemnation of manusmriti has a long history decades ago dr baba sahib ambedkar burned the manusmriti but then the issue was related to untouchability nevertheless the incident set in motion an extensive campaign against the manusmriti and then a few years ago an angry mob in kerala set up five copies of the manusmriti this time the reason was women's independence they have cited the piece of a verse from manusmriti that i have mentioned in the beginning this brings to mind a story the story of a few visually impaired persons going to see an elephant after touching the leg one of them declared ah the elephant is like a pillar the second one felt its stomach and then screamed hey look here the elephant is like a rock and the third person replied no 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 the elephant is like a brush because he had touched on its tail similar is the case here they did not pay any attention to the whole picture they did not mind the preceding and succeeding discussions and even the context if you ask me why this uh, this has not been addressed so long if such a misinterpretation was in circulation for decades the answer is that we sometimes pass through a long and even full period of time as a result the initial impression and the desire to react would gradually recede and now after a long pause when the old conundrum is heard again we realize how deeply this issue is ingrained in the social psyche and feel for the need to give an academic explanation further in the recent past also in a ugc sponsored orientation program a resource person who is a notable legal professional from a higher court of the country was seen delivering the same rhetoric to a group of young academic professionals many of those professionals were from non sanskrit background so when i responded to the resource person said hey i am not telling you anything new this is there in our jurisprudence and there was no scope for presenting a lengthy academic discourse to disclose this blunder to that resource person it was painful to see that people are not even willing to open up to a logical explanation and more terrible when it comes out from the mouth of even some sanskrit professors as if they consider it a boon in this guys to belittle our esteemed women folk in the present context the world in question actually talks about women safety which was colossally mistaken for their freedom maybe due to the presence of the word swadandriyam the meaning of which is entirely different from what it is meant in regional indian languages so to understand it better let us analyze the words line by line word by word the first line is 
पिता रक्षति कौमारे विच मीन फादर टेक्स केर इन चाइल्डुड एंड द सेकेंड लाइन इज भरता रक्षति यौवने विच मीन हस्ब टेक्स केर इन यूथ एंड द थर्ड लाइन इज रक्षण दि स्थानी रे पुत्रा विच मीन चिलड्रन टेक् केर इन ओल्ड एज एंड द फोर्थ लाइन इज न स्त्री स्वातंत्रहति विच मीन women shall not set out for self protection now pita or father bharta or husband putra or children are the persons destined to take care of the woman at three different phases of her life such as kaumare in her childhood yauvane in her youth and sthavire in her old age the verb rakshati stands for taking care of and is used in its plural form as rakshanti in the third line rakshanti sthavire putra to agree with the plural noun putra now let us analyze each of these components once again among her caretakers pita or father and bharta or husband are in singular and putra children in plural in sanskrit reference to a class or a group is made using the singular form of a noun if every member of that group shares similar characteristics and such a reference is equally applicable to all its members just like generic nouns that refer to all members of a class or group even in english for example don't kill a human being here though the word human being is singular it is applies that human should not be killed of course we know the ground reality is different every other day someone is murdered so let us take another example an apple is a healthy food stands to me that apples are good to health similarly pita or father and bharta or husband refers to every father and husband whereas putra children used in plural serves a specific purpose what is that it refers to both male and female here the grammar rule of panini puman striya is applied the rule says that wherever a given word in its feminine and masculine gender in the same number and case has to be compounded then the masculine word shall be retained so putra ha shall be understood as both putra ha male children and putriya female children it means that the offspring may it be female or male he is responsible to take care of the woman in her old age so in short sons and daughters share equal responsibility in protecting their mother generally there will be only one verb in a sentence a verse or a shloka is also a sentence but in metric style but there are two verbs in it rakshati and arhati both rakshati and arhati are verbs in present tense present tense is used not only to refer to an action taking place at the time it is mentioned about but also to convey several other features of a verb for example the sun rises in the east and sets in the west take another example you must have heard you must have read in the newspaper such as such and such a country drops bombs and the bridge collapses or buildings collapse this must have happened a day before yet the following day headlines would be in simple present tense bombards collapses etc as if it is happening regularly just as the sun rises and sets every day so in the present context the grammar rule of panini dhatu sambandhe pratyaya is applied this rule sanctions the random use of verbs in different tenses and moods when there is a syntactical relation between the senses of the verbs what is that syntactical relation here here the verb rakshati repeated in the first two lines and then in plural in the third line and arhati in the last line are interconnected by virtue of this said rule the present tense rakshati assumes the imperative mood like rakshatu while 
Arunhati remains in simple present tense. Now let us see how every line can be reread along with the last line to get a complete meaning, such as Pita Rakshati Kaumare. Father may take care in childhood. Bharata Rakshati Yavane. Husband may take care in youth. Raksham this thamire putraha. Children may take care in old age. And therefore, Nastri Swatandriya Marhati. The simple meaning is that a woman shall not have to set out to defend herself. Hey, how come Nastri Swatandriya Marhati means woman shall not set out to defend herself? In fact, this question is prompted by our social conditioning and the influence of colloquial language wherein the word Swatandriya means liberty or independence. But in Sanskrit, it has multiple meanings. Therefore, to get out of the clutches of this conditioned understanding, let us examine the parts of the line Nastri Swatandriya Marathati once again. If syntactically rearranged, the line is read as Tri Swatandriyam Na Arhati. Tri means woman. Is used as a generic noun, as it was in the case of Pita and Bharta mentioned above. Hence, the word Tri stands to refer to every woman. Swatandriyam means prime importance and self-effort. Na Arhati means does not deserve. Now again, how does the word Swatandriyam mean prime importance or self-effort? Generally, the word Swatandriyam refers to the extent of personal liberty and free will. There is no doubt. However, an important point to note is that a verb is capable of expressing several meanings and this is one of the salient features of Sanskrit. Although this feature might be seen in other languages, in the case of Sanskrit, it invites emphasis because knowledge of this feature is essential in understanding or to grasp not only the spoken form of Sanskrit but also the very rich and vast range of terminologies of philosophical as well as scientific literature in Sanskrit. Hence, here the word Swatandri must be analyzed as follows. There are two components in it. The two components of the word Swatandriyam are Swa and Tantra. Swa means of or by one's own self. Otherwise, something that belongs to one's own self. And Tantra in this context means prime importance and self-effort or to take care of. A celebrated Sanskrit dictionary called the Amarakosha elucidates several meanings of the word Tantra such as Tantram Pradhani, Siddhante, Sutravaye, Parichade. Here, Pradhana means prime importance or effort, etc. Siddhanta means doctrine, dogma or final view. Sutravaya means a loom used to weave threads into a piece of cloth and the word Parichada has at least a dozen meanings which has to be understood contextually such as the warp, a covering, a piece of cloth, Attendance of someone or circle of his dependence, personal property or all of one's possessions or belongings, external appendage and paraphernalia that are necessary for traveling, all are meanings of Parichada. Among these meanings, the contextually suitable meaning of the word Swatantra is prime importance and endeavor or effort in self-protection. And Swatandriyam refers to the state or condition in which one endeavors to take care of one's own self. This feature is called multiple senseness of verbs. Oftentimes prefixes are used to reveal the latent meanings of verbs, as in the root, as in the case of the root bhu, which means satta. In English it means existence. Bhavati is one of its derivatives, which means being, present, etc. But when prefixes are added, its latent meanings would be revealed as in Anubhavati, which means experiencing. Sambhavati means happening. Parabhavati means getting defeated. And Prabhavati means origin or capable of, etc. 
Now you may please consider the following usages of another root bhaja, which means seva or service in a variety of downright different meanings, even without a prefix. Ye bhajanti tu maam bhaktya maite teshu chakya ham This is in the Bhagavad Gita. And in the very next line also, apichetu sudura acharo bhajate maam ananya bhag. Here bhajati and bhajate are derived from the root bhaja which means seva without a prefix, service, worship etc. And then bhajanti vipadas turna matikramanti sampadaha. This is in Bhatti Kavya, an epic poetry. Here vipadaha means misfortune, turna means soon, bhajanti means overtakes. Panau phani bhajati kangana bhuya maishe. Soyam Manoharamani Ramaniyam Chai. Here Pano Hani Kankana Bhuyam Bhajati means the serpent becomes a bangle in the hand. Bhajati means becomes. Koti Ira Bandhana Dhanur Gunayoga Pattam Vyapara Parada Mamum Bhaja Bhuta Bhartu. This is in Naishadam. Another famous poetry. Amum Bhaja in the second line means court him, accept him as husband. And then, Abhitattamayopi Mardavam Bhajate Kaiva Katha Shari Rishu. Even the iron Mardavam Bhajate becomes soft when heated. What to talk about humans in distress? Not only these examples, but there are also a number of Panini's rules that suggest the multiple senses of rules. For example, let us examine just one of these rules, Shilisha Alingane. This rule ordains a specific grammatical application to the root shlisha which stands for alinganam. Alinganam means to embrace or to hug. In the entire root index of Panini, there is but only one root shlisha which stands but only for alinganam. That being the case, why should Panini reiterate or repeat shlisha alingane to the root shlisha that means alinganam? Doesn't it sound redundant as saying, hey, take that pen which is used for writing. For a pen is always used for writing. Therefore, this is an indication that roots have several other meanings. The fact is that Panini adhere to the general principle that all roots have multiple senses. And roots that generally require a prefix to bring out the latent meaning are enumerated in the most prominent meaning in the root index itself such as bhu satayam and then rules which clearly distinguishable meanings are laid down in the root index itself in multiple meanings such as gadhr pratishtha lipsayor granthecha where gadhr is the root used to mean pratishtha fame lipsa longing for and Grantha, composition or treatise, as in Krishna Gatha, which is a text telling the tale of Krishna. So, in the wake of the reasons and examples we have examined so far, I hope it may not be difficult anymore to understand the specific contextual meaning of the word Swatandriya. Similarly, there is yet another verse in the Manusmriti where the word Aswatantraha is used. And the verse is Aswatantraha Striyakaryaha Purushai Swair Divanisham Vishayeshucha Sajjantya Samsthapya Atmano Vashe. This should not be misunderstood as a forceful detention or confinement, but providing constant protection without themselves setting out for that. Now, you may ask a question. What if a woman asks, I know how to defend myself? Why do men do that? Who are they to protect me? It would have been intriguing if it were asked them. But now times are changed. Hence the Manusmriti need not be held liable for what it mentioned then when women actually wanted their men to protect them. In fact, this verse also has several noteworthy elements such as Purushaihi Swaihi, which means by her own men meaning father, husband and brothers. It does not say men should protect their women. The freedom to choose men was vested with the women. So, 
such usages require careful consideration to extract the contextual meaning in every verse i repeat in every verse manusmriti extols women manusmriti yells at the end of its throw to every father brother husband and brother in law to adore and to adorn them if they wish for the good of all pitruhir bhratruhishchaitah patibhir devarais tatha pujya bhuhaitavyascha bahu kalyana nipsudhi fathers brothers husbands and brothers in law have to respect them adorn them for the good of all manusmriti hails the society where its women are respected and forewarns of the consequences of its women disregarded yatra naryastu pujyante ramande tatra devata yatrai rastu na pujyante sarvas tatra phala kriya it's a divine abode where women are respected otherwise every human endeavor is futile it cautions every family the bitter aftermath of its daughters wife and daughters in law in distress and princes families where they are at peace so chandi jamayo yatra vinashyatyasu tatkulam na so chandi tu yatra itaha vardhate tadhi sarvada the entire family is bound to ruin where its jami suffer and such families will definitely flourish where they are well taken care of here the word jami is used to refer to daughters and wife of course a daughter in law is also a daughter by all means manusmriti advises everyone to take utmost care in protecting the women if women are left unprotected it will end up in bringing sorrow to two families sukshme bhyo bhi prasange bhya striyo raksha visheshatah doyo kuleyo shokamavahe yurakshitah and it urges every man to go to any extent to take care of his wife because when she is protected a man protects not only her but also his children his character of being a doting father and caring husband and his family from unending anguish his own self and his duty as a man as a brother as a husband as a father swam prasutin charitram ja kulam atmaname vacha स्वच धर्म प्रयत्न जायां रक्षं हि रक्षति दि मनुस्मृति एंड दि एंशंट इंडियन हेव नथिंग आज प्रेशियस आज देर प्रोजनी एंड ए गर्ल इज अ गोल इन दि अबोर्ड एक्चुअली दि सब्जेक्ट मैटर ऑफ दिस डिस्कशन एंड द अटैक्स ऑन सांस्कृत लैंग्वेज आर ऑल्सो इंटर कनेक्टेड दि मेजर कंटेंशन इज दैट सांस्कृत इज डेड declaring something dead because you haven't been in contact with it is so unsighted sanskrit is alive sanskrit is vibrantly alive in full glory another controversy is that sanskrit is biased which is also a blind standpoint the fact is that this civilization has always held the wise and the learned in high esteem please keep it in mind that the intellectual contributions in sanskrit were made by scholars from different walks of life but understanding that requires training in the fundamentals of the language in which these texts are made and also beware very much beware of the fact that the vernacular forms of stories that are based on celebrated sanskrit texts have their original content altered either by poetic fancy or deliberately by the cunning of the mastermind of thought itself another argument is that sanskrit is too technical and hence it is beyond the reach of the masses hats off for being too technical because it preserves many of our prehistoric intellectual treasures intact in written communications in the interface between the author and the reader the culture as well as the linguistic ability of the commentator and translator also play a vital role as a result there are several literary masterpieces that are extolled and became backbones of religious beliefs political dogmas inspired men of wisdom and helped bring in social reforms there are also books that have been condemned banned and even burned 
Manusmriti is one such. In fact, Manusmriti is a book on ethics, code of conduct, etc. These codes of conduct are subject to change depending on the requirements of the society which Smritis themselves proclaim. And that is how about 28 Smritis came into being and Manusmriti is only one among them. So from this perspective, Manusmriti had become obsolete centuries ago. Today we are a sovereign nation with a constitution within the ambit of which there are civil and penal courts in place. And these courts are also, these civil and penal courts are also revisited to make amendments, to accommodate requirements of the changing society. And so there is no necessity to look into ancient texts like Manusmriti for guidance. However, we should not look down upon it for two reasons. One, that the text in itself has cultural and historic representation of our nation as it has scores of subjects like virtues and vices, do's and don'ts, social etiquettes, socio-religious and psychological aspects of ancient Indian life and second, it is a text written in Sanskrit, reading of which is essential in the cultivation of many linguistic aspects, any wanton blemish any wanton blemish thrown on to the text will not only result in a gem of human intellectual monument forsaken forever, but also will distance people from Sanskrit language itself. Turning down academic pursuits will bring in irreversible losses to a civilized society because Sanskrit is a treasure house of priceless literary works, philosophical and scientific contents. It is an architectural splendor, flexible enough to have room for any idea and is built on the rock-solid edifice of stringent grammatical rules, whose blueprint is ready at hand to check interpolations, to verify anomalies, to rectify mistakes, to usher in new ideas and the ward of intrusive content. That is the reason, that is the primary reason why the people of this country, though moved a bit at the first provocation, poses and ponders over than censuring its intellectual legacies en masse. 